With each new day in the desert, the sky is painted in a promising froth of tangerine and apricot and melon. Up there, all seems cool and refreshing. Down here, it's dry and barren, a forbidding landscape, one that gives no pause, except in the occasional dusty outpost like Patagonia, where the welcome mat is out this time of year, a peaceful oasis offered in hopes of snagging a flash of color. Surely, here on the edge of the Sonoran Desert in southern Arizona, life must be limited, severely so. Well, don't bet on it. In fact, follow that truck up ahead, bouncing along forest service roads in the Coronado National Forest. Jeff Glassberg's inside, and Jeff Glassberg only goes where life is bountiful and beautiful. Usually I go someplace and I have an idea where I want to go, but then sometimes I kind of wander off and someplace else and come across some interesting things that way too. And Jeff does come across some interesting things. Like Zami hair streaks and Boaz de Val's yellows. And the occasional tiny checker spot. Oh, there it is. It's really, really a nice guy. And the common streaky skipper. It, it's, its wings look like you took brown aluminum foil and crumpled it up. Jeff has come from the other side of the continent, New Jersey, in search of butterflies. Well, I really want to see uh, Cestus Skipper. That's uh, C-E-S-T-U-S. He's met up with his friend Jim Brock, an Arizonan who knows well these mountains and the butterflies they hide. And there is no better day than this kind of day for these two. How does a guy get so passionate about butterflies? Oh, I don't know. How do you get so passionate about, you know, anything, hunting, people? Get... This is actually just really a, a more sophisticated form of hunting, really. The only thing Jeff points at his prey is an extended lens. Sometimes you get them, and sometimes you don't. Photographs are his trophies. Got him. And his plan is to photograph every butterfly in North America and publish field guides for the East and the West. That's 700 species of butterflies. Some species you need the upper side, you need the underside, you need the male, you need the female, so probably about a thousand photos. And here's something, here's a probably a, a checkered skipper. Spend a few minutes with Jeff and you'll notice that. Any conversation heads south as soon as a butterfly flits past. Hold that thought. People often, you know, associated butterflies with human soul. Greeks, South Americans, there goes another two-tailed swallow tail. What they do with it, you know, and 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 uh, um, hold on a minute. <laughs> I need to follow this butterfly. Here it comes, here it comes here, back. Here it comes, here it comes. Here it comes. That's a damn Dina. No way. Get out of here. It can't be a Dina. That's Not what it, this time of year. No, that's what it was. That's what that was. That, that orange is pretty distinctive. There he goes. Now, Jeff wasn't always chasing after <laughs> butterflies. He's a molecular biologist by trade with a law degree thrown in. And his work was once strictly lab work. But in 1981, just after she'd been attacked, Jeff came across a rape victim in New York's Central Park. Troubled, he decided there must be some way to identify her attacker using the evidence left behind. So Jeff went home and invented DNA fingerprinting. That's right, holds the patent on it. It was at the forefront of the O.J. Simpson trial, a commonplace tool in law enforcement today identifying the unique genetic codes we each carry that make us who we are. Five years after inventing the process, Jeff sold his DNA company. I didn't ask him for how much. Just know it financed his new life of traveling the country, chasing butterflies. It's just a lot of fun, and I'm just fortunate to be in a position to travel around and do this. There's not, there's not many people who get to, get to be lucky enough to do that. Jeff will be on the road about half the year, crawling on his belly for the perfect shot of an American snout or regal fritillary. I come back, I go to Kansas, I go back, then I go back home, and then I go to Colorado, and then from Colorado I fly to California, go back, and then I'm going out to Washington State, and then back to Colorado again. And that's just before July. Jeff founded the North American Butterfly Association and runs it from his home, publishes this magazine. His wife is secretary treasurer and must be awfully understanding. She's, she's not as obsessive neurotic about it as I am. Jeff takes his DNA discovery in stride. He reasons someone would have come up with it eventually. This is the work that makes him proud now. I think that here I'm actually having even more of a positive effect. I actually feel better about it. Jeff aims to make butterflying just as popular as bird watching. Wishes each of us could feel the relaxation and freedom he feels out here, surrounded by fields of wildflowers and dancing butterflies. 
It's a long way from the laboratory here, and that's just fine by Jeff. To me, that's as good as it gets. I mean, you can't, you know, <laughs> that's, that's to me is, is just the greatest thing. Maybe we ought to get some lunch. What time is it? Lunch? God, when the buggins this good? <laughs> In southern Arizona's Coronado National Forest, Scott Thompson, the Oklahoma traveler. 